covenants are factions within Dark Souls. There are nine covenants in total, and all but one affect the multiplayer experience. Become a warrior of the sunlight by praying at the broken altar in Undead Parish. There is a faith requirement of 25. After joining, you will co-op as a gold phantom and earn sunlight medals by beating bosses during co-op. Covenant rewards include the Miracle's Lightning Spear, Great Lightning Spear, and Sunlight Spear. Join the Princess Guard by defeating the boss in Anorlando and proceeding to the Royal Bedchamber. You don't rank up in this covenant, but will immediately receive the Ring of the Sun Princess and the ability to use two powerful miracles that must be obtained elsewhere. To join the Way of the White, speak to Petrus of Thorland at Firelink Shrine. Knights and clerics start the game as members of the Way of the White. This covenant has no rewards, but while a member, you will match up easier during co-op and potentially have fewer invasions. Becoming a Dark Wraith requires diverting from the main path. You must not place the Lord Vessel until you have defeated the Four Kings and met Koth. Join to receive the Dark Hand, a fist weapon that extracts humanity from NPCs and online players. Offer humanity to rank up and at level 1 receive a Red Eye Orb for unlimited invasions. Then rank 2 gives you the Dark Sword and Dark Wraith armor set. Become a Forest Hunter by reaching Alvina in the Dark Root Garden. While a member, the Forest Protectors will not attack. Receive the Cat Covenant Ring, allowing you to invade as a Blue Phantom and rank up by getting kills during forest invasions. After your third kill, you are given the Ring of Fog. Follow the Path of the Dragon by praying to the Everlasting Dragon in Ash Lake. You will receive the Dragon Headstone that lets you breathe fire, and the Dragon Eye, which allows you to be summoned into 1v1 invasions as a Black Phantom to get Dragon Scales. Offering these scales ranks you up, and at rank 2 you get the Dragon Torso Stone that lets you perform the Dragon Roar. Join the Blades of the Dark Moon by visiting the Dark Moon Tomb while wearing the Dark Moon Seance Ring. Kneel before the Fog Wall, but do not enter. Receive a Blue Eye Orb to invade players that have sinned, and wear the Blade of the Dark Moon Ring to be summoned as a Spirit of Vengeance. Succeed in either and receive a Souvenir of Reprisal to rank up in the Covenant. The first rank rewards you with the Dark Moon Blade and Dark Moon Talisman. Become a Grave Lord's Servant by visiting Lord Nito through a secret coffin in the catacombs while carrying an Eye of Death. Once a servant, you will be given the Grave Lord Sword and the Grave Lord Sword Dance Miracle. Using an Eye of Death sends Black Phantoms into three players' worlds. Then they must find your sign, invade, and kill you to break the curse. Give ten Eyes of Death to Lord Nito to rank up and receive the Grave Lord Great Sword Dance Miracle. To join the Chaos Servants, you must find the Invisible Wall after Quaylog's Domain. Speak to the White Spider to join the Covenant and receive the Great Chaos Fireball Pyromancy. Offer 30 Humanities to be rewarded with the Chaos Storm Pyromancy and a shortcut that allows you to skip two bosses. This is the only Covenant that doesn't affect your multiplayer experience. There is no best weapon in Dark Souls. Players can craft characters around weapons that have specific movesets, deal good damage, or are easily obtained. In addition to base damage, weapons have bonus scaling depending on stats like strength or dexterity. Most weapons can be upgraded through different paths like regular, magic, and fire that affect both base damage and scaling. There are four types of physical damage, normal, strike, slash, and thrust, as well as special damages of magic, fire, and lightning. Some weapons can also have status effects of poison, bleed, and curse. Daggers only have a modest attack, but can be jabbed in rapid succession and are effective in critical hits such as after a parry or when backstabbing. Straight swords, like the long sword, inflict consistent regular and high slash damage, making it applicable to a variety of situations. Great swords, like the claymore, are usually wielded with two hands due to their great weight, usually swung in large arcs and effective against multiple foes. Ultra great swords, like the Spyhander, are held with two hands, but its wielder must still be inhumanly strong. It sends foes flying when hit solidly. Curved swords like the Falchion inflict little damage with each hit, but fluid chain attacks are deadly, effective against cloth and flesh. Katanas like the Uchi Katana are known for their brisk slashing motions. They cause bleeding, but the blade is easily nicked. Curved greatswords like the Morikuma are unparalleled weapons that cut like a katana, but is heavier and requires extreme strength, dexterity, and stamina to wield. Piercing swords like the Rapier can attack with a shield held up. Their thrusting attacks pierce and are effective against foes with hard exteriors. Axes, like the Battle Axe, have a powerful attack due to their weight, but one wrong swing leaves the wielder wide open. The Great Axe is a veritable mass of iron. Its weight sends foes flying, but makes it difficult to handle without inhuman strength. Hammers, like the Mace, are strike weapons that are effective against most foes and can break the guard of a shield. Great Hammers, like the Great Club, smash enemies from upside the head and are known for their trademark leaping attack. Fists and claws have short reaches and quick cooldowns, but cannot be wielded with two hands. Spears have a long reach and can be used with a shield up, effective against hard exteriors, but the hit radius is small and is easily blocked by shield. 
Halberts are long hilted weapons mixing spear-like thrusting and the large sweeping swings of an axe. They're difficult to handle, requiring both strength and dexterity. Whips are virtually ineffective against armor and tough scales, but quite formidable against enemies with exposed skin. Bows, great bows, and crossbows each use their own ammo and come in many damage types like fire, lightning, poison, and magic. Catalysts, pyromancy flames, and talismans are used for casting spells and miracles. Enemies in Dark Souls are hostile NPCs and creatures that attack the player. Broken down by type, there are hollows, giants, skeletons, demons, wildlife, and other enemies, each with set defenses, resistances, health, and item drops. Hollows are your first enemy and can be found in many forms, from the undead warriors, assassins, and soldiers, to the flaming attack dogs and infested ghouls. Higher level versions include the Balder Knights, Dark Wraiths, and powerful Crystal Hollows. Skeletons are tough enemies that wield curved swords, shields, and bows. There are giant ones that have enormous falchions and large bows. The skeleton beasts attack furiously while on all fours. The bone towers burst suddenly from the ground, and when you find the skeleton babies, they will never stop coming for you. There are many giants you must fight as well. Great stone knights will awake if you come too close, and infested barbarians attack with large clubs or throw boulders. The crystal golems slam down their fists and shoot crystals from the ground. The sentinels and royal sentinels wield the giant's halberd and shield. There are many demons to kill, including minor versions of fallen bosses like the Taurus and Capra demon. The batwing demons fight with lightning spears. The stone demons hide in plain sight and breathe fire. The crow demons or harpies slash with their wings and grab you with their talons. The wildlife in Dark Souls is also out to kill you, from the cursed basilisk and the man-eating shells to the surprisingly tough and strong mushroom people. There are small, large, and snow rats that will poison you if they bite, drakes that shoot lightning from their mouths, and a swamp covered in crag spiders that breathe fire while giant leeches and mosquitoes spit poison at you. The man serpents use large swords and the serpent mages cast lightning magic to defend Sen's fortress. There are many enemies that defy classification like the ghosts that cannot be damaged normally, or the chaos eaters that spit acid to destroy weapons and armor. The silver knights patrol in Orlando with swords, spears, and deadly great bows. The Pasakas consist of a snake's body with octopus tentacles for a head and find you by using sound. Although most enemies will respawn after resting at a bonfire, there are some that thankfully do not, including any black knights not in the kiln of the first flame, the toxic bloatart snipers, and the great felines of Darkroot. Armor is an important part of Dark Souls, as its defenses, resistances, and weight will determine how effective you are in combat. But armor is also a cosmetic choice, and individual pieces can be mixed and matched to create an optimized setup from a defensive or fashion souls perspective. The individual pieces of armor include helms, chests, gauntlets, and leggings. There are 56 official sets of armor and 12 have different appearances based on your gender, but no different effects or restrictions. There are also unique armor helms available that don't belong to any set. Some with special effects like the Crown of Dusk that boosts spell damage but reduces magic defense, or the Three Masks of Pinwheel that boost health, equip load, or stamina. There is even something that can be worn to cast light in the darkness. Armor can be upgraded similar to weapons with Titanite and defends against the four physical types of damage, normal, strike, slash, and thrust, as well as special damages of magic, fire, and lightning. Each armor piece will also increase your resistances to the three status effects, poison, bleed, and curse. Some armor will increase your poise, which determines how much damage you can take before being stunned. Armor's weight, in addition to any weapons, will affect your equip load, determining your speed both rolling and walking. If you weigh 25% or less than total, you have the fastest roll. 25 to 50% is medium, and over 50% equip load, and you are fat rolling. If you go over 100%, you cannot roll at all. The starting sets of each class will be found on corpses throughout the world, like the Sorcerer and Thief sets in Lower Undeadburg, and the Knight and Hunter sets in Darkroot Basin. The armor of most NPCs can be had, including Oswald of Carmen's Black set. Sometimes the only way to get the gear is to kill them, like the Iron set of Solaire, and other outfits like the Xanthus set require completing a quest first. Some enemies have a chance to drop their armor pieces, like the various undead who can drop the Hollow Soldier, Hollow Thief, and Hollow Warrior sets. But note that these sets don't have gauntlets. The Balder Knights have a rare chance at dropping their armor, but it can also be purchased from the Crestfallen Merchant. The Silver Knight set is found in a treasure chest in Anor Londo, but like many of the rare armors, this upgrades with Twinkling Titanite. Knight. And there is a special merchant who will sell most of the boss's armor after you have defeated them, like the Iron Golem set.